crazy. I think like the one food experience that I remember the most was we were, I was in Okinawa and we were visiting this member. He'd always have us over for um, lunch on every, like once a month on a Tuesday. We'd go over and teach him a quick lesson and he'd always make these great meals. And so we'd always be super excited going over there. So we, we go over there one day and he's got, you know, rice and like this, this Japanese miso soup and this, this fish. And I'm looking at this fish and it looks like it's still alive. Like, I, I, I couldn't tell if it had been cooked, if he had, like, broiled it or, like, done anything to it. And so I'm sitting there and I, and I turn to him like, hey, so uh, how did you cook this fish? And he goes, oh, I microwaved it. And I was like, oh, you microwaved it. Wow. Um, yeah. So uh, how, how long did you microwave it for? He's like, oh, I just heat up a little bit, about a minute. And I was like, all right. So I uh, guess we're going to have to eat this. So <laughs> me, me and my companion, he's sitting next to me. And he's like, I can't believe we're doing this. Like, man, we're doing this. We have to eat this. And I, I put my fork in it and I go to cut it and it, it poops on my plate. And I was just sitting there like, oh, my goodness. I can't believe that just happened. But you know, we we had to eat it. Like we we didn't want to be rude to this to this guy, and so we're cutting it, and he hasn't gutted it, and we're like trying to find meat, and we're just sitting there, just like dying on the inside. But we're trying to smile. We're like, yeah, this is way good. Thank you so much. On a, on a P day once, we we go with this this member of our our English class, and we go up to the top of this mountain, and uh, we end up just like riding our bikes down, and um, looking back. It was uh, it was kind of like a fun PD activity, but I realized that that was super dangerous. Like we were flying down this hill, going faster than cars. And afterwards, I was like a young missionary. And I remember being like, "Yeah, we we probably shouldn't have done that. I think that was the scariest thing." I have other ones, but I don't think I can share the other ones. <laughs> I think the most spiritual experience I ever had was this. Uh, we were working with this family. He was a, he was a military man. Um, he was living, or he was stationed down in Okinawa, and we were working with his two daughters. Him and his wife had been baptized when, um, right before they had been married, and they had fallen inactive basically up until we had met them. And they had a a daughter that was eleven, a daughter that was seven, turning eight. And the the parents kind of felt like you know everything in, in their life was going good, like physically, mentally, except for they felt like you know they were kind of struggling spiritually, and they wanted to, you know, come back to church. And uh, they ended up meeting. The, the missionary couple that was there and the couple introduced them to us and we started teaching them and um, the daughters decided that they were going to be baptized and as we were teaching the lessons me and my companion realized that that if um, their father if, if this brother if he prepared himself he'd be able to get the ironic priesthood and he could baptize his daughters and that that was so cool to us like we thought it was great that this family would was so excited for their for their daughters to get baptized and now the fact that the dad could be, even be a more part of that we thought that he would really enjoy that and so we uh we um brought it up in a lesson to him once we we told him that if he were to prepare that he would have the opportunity to baptize his daughters and it like his countenance changed like you could tell that it it went from being something that his daughters were doing to something that he could do for his daughters and he was like yeah i'll prepare for that and um he did he baptized both of his daughters and it was probably the best experience I ever had. It wasn't my mistake, but in the MTC, what the what what our teachers did is when we were getting ready to leave, they they had written down like funny stuff that we had said, and one of them was in in Japanese. A way that you can say because is or another way to say the word because is no de. So you say like whatever, whatever, no de, something, something. It's like because of this, this, and so this 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 guy in our class was was teaching this lesson. And he went to say no day, but he said the word for no do, which is throat. And so it wasn't like the funniest mistake, but if you were listening to it in English, he'd be like, he'd be like, yeah, 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 throat, yeah, yeah, and so he'd keep talking. And so our teacher was just busting up during the la lesson, and yeah, that was the one thing I remember the most of that mess up. I, I realized that nothing comes easy, you know? You have to work for it. Um, some things may fall into your lap, but they fall into your lap after you worked hard for it. I got really good at riding a bike with no hands. Don't tell my mission president that. Hopefully he doesn't see this video. Got really good at riding with no hands, really good at broomsticking, but towards the end of my mission I repented and rode with two. Became like a chopstick pro, you kinda have to, you starve to death. Um came got really, really good at um imitating people. Calling people on on phones and pretending to be uh different people got really good at intimidate or like impersonating, uh not impersonating, doing voices for like members or 
other companions and yeah, that was about it. I think the, the most extreme weather was typhoons on Okinawa and it would just rain like you couldn't believe. You'd be outside for five seconds and just soaked. It felt like Forrest Gump a little bit where sometimes you felt like the water was coming up from the sides just like out of everywhere. And typhoons were the worst. Before realizing that I would have to amputate my leg, I had kind of having that premonition that that was coming and even though it was still a ways away that I'd have to prepare for that. And I think that changed the way that I looked at my mission, it made me appreciate it a little bit more, it made me want to stay there more. And so I think that hardest moment kind of prepared me to finish up and kind of prepared me for now, I guess. And so I just remembering to, to love the people and everything else just, just comes with that. If you just, you know, submit your will to God and, and understand that He wants you to love those people and you really, really love those people and want to do the best you can for them, like everything else falls into place. You know, stay close to those those people that you served with. Um, maybe, I, I like in, in my case, I, I had a really, really rough transition and I had those friends that stayed by, you know. So I think having that camaraderie is, as a as a return missionary, just like being together with those people helps a ton with that adjustment. And then also take advantage of of like social media, being able to have your own phone and, and staying in contact with your, um, with like converts and other members. Um, I think as you get home, never really forget that, you know, just like act like you were still there, still like try to stay in contact with those people and try to be a part of their lives. And um, I think it makes, you know, gives you that feeling that the mission never really ends. You're like continually trying to work with those people you worked with before and it keeps those those eternal friendships you made in the mission, it keeps them eternal, you know, if you try to make them a priority when you get home.